Hello, and welcome to the fourth part of this Ruby Fan Fiction reading of I Need You So Bad by Prismatic Bumblebee. So we're going to start with chapter, I think it's 11, if I remember right. I don't really feel like counting, so I guess you can do that. But uh, it's chapter whatever, a suggestion. So we'll see what happens. The story is going to get just about as interesting as it was. <laughs> Blake stirred as she felt the new presence on her bed, leaning up and giving a small yawn. She looked around her bed until her amber hues met lilac, a small smile forming on her features as she realized who owned those beautiful eyes. Yang, what are you doing in my bed? She asked casually. She already knew the answer, but it wouldn't hurt to hear the blonde's excuse. Uh, well, you see, I fell off my bed and didn't feel like climbing back up to my bed, Yang said more... Well, more of ask than anything, but she was half right. Blake nodded and rubbed her chin for a moment, her smile growing wider as she shrugged and pulled the blonde brawler into her lap and giggled quietly. Hmm, I suppose that's fine then. I am your girlfriend. The raven-haired faunus laid her lips on the other girl's forehead. Hey, does that mean I can start sleeping with you more? The brawler asked as she looked up and locked her lilac hues with the faunus's amber hues before leaning up and stealing a kiss from the other, which caused the faunus's cheeks to heat up. I, I guess you've already been sleeping with me for a while now, so it doesn't really matter. Blake looked around and noticed the other two members beginning to wake up. Wise rose from her own bed, giving a yawn and getting out of her bed, leaving the waking little rose. Ruby watched lazily as her teammate left the bed. Weiss, come back, she said as she attempted to move from the bed, but ended up face planting on the floor. Weiss, Ruby whined, causing the heiress to stop and turn, tilting her head. What is it, Ruby? Ruby launched herself off the floor and latched herself onto the snow-haired heiress, wrapping her legs around the girl's waist and her arms around the other's neck. Love me. Plake shook her head and giggled once more. They're silly. Now I know where Ruby gets her personality from, she said as she turned her attention towards the blonde-haired girl sitting in her lap. I suppose, but she's always but she's always like that sometimes, Yang responded as she reached up and poked the raven-haired girl's exposed fa faunus ears. Blake's ears flickered at the brawler's touch, rolling her eyes. Blake grabbed the brawler by her sides and pushed her back against the bed, causing the squeak to leave the brawler. Yang felt her felt her back against the mattress, her cheeks beginning to heat up as she noticed how close the faunus was at the moment. Uh, uh, okay, I get it, don't touch the ears. No, no, it's fine, I'm just feeling a little feisty is all. Blake whispered into the brawler's ear, then slowly beginning to lick the lobe of her lover's ear. This isn't weird at all. <laughs> Yang began to shiver as she felt the faunus's tongue against her ear, as well as the hot, the hot breath. The, f the blonde-haired huntress attempted to try and find some way to get back on top. Sadly, there was none. Well, I like it when your fight. Yang was cut off by Yang, pressing her lips against her own. A devious smirk found its way onto the assassin's features as she pulled away. Sorry, you just talk a lot when you're flustered. It's cute, especially when I cut you off like that. You get all pouty, Blake said as she rubbed her palm against the brawler's reddening cheek redding cheek i do not get flustered yang responded as she crossed her arms and looked away just as blake said yang began to get pout yang began to pout slightly well jeez weiss whatever you say blake poked the brawler's nose and got off of the other huntress the ebony haired huntress then got up from the bed and noted that ruby and weiss had left and that the shower was currently running i guess they're showering together oh well Yang sat up and hopped up from the bed and wrapped her arms around the raven-haired girl's neck and snuggled herself as much as she could into the back of the other girl's neck. Maybe we should shower together sometime, huh? Yang said. Yang asked, trying to throw out an idea for something that they both could enjoy. Hmm, I wouldn't mind that. We'll take one as soon as Ruby and Weiss get out, Blake said calmly as she headed towards the only desk in the, room, the dorm room and sat down. Yang's cheek grew to a crimson hue as she heard the other's words. Sure, she did suggest it, but she wouldn't have guessed it would be this soon. Nevertheless, she couldn't turn it down. Oh, okay, you got it, Blake. Okay, whatever. Uh, Blake smirked to herself once more and got up from the desk. There reminds me, I have something for you, Yang, she said as she walked over to her closet and rummaged through the closet for something to wear. 
Yang tilted her head and walked over to the faunus, waiting patiently for the other to find what she was looking for. Uh, what are you looking for, dear? Oh, don't worry about it, hon. We have to shower first. I'm just grabbing some clothes. And after the shower, you were going to the place where my gift for you is. You should probably get some clothes, too. I think Ruby and Weiss are almost done in there. Blake said as she pulled out her normal combat attire and looked over the brawler, and her wide grin and her grin began to turn into a wide smile. <sighs> what's what's so funny, Blake? Yang asked as she noticed something behind the other's back. Her lilac hue was trying to catch a better glimpse of it. However, she was unable to. I stole your panties, Blake said, as she attempted to restrain her composure from laughing as she removed the blonde's golden and royal purple panties from behind her back and began to twirl them about. They're so innocent looking. They fit you perfectly, Yang. I want to give those back, Blake, Yang yelled as she felt embarrassment rush towards her, causing her entire face to turn into a bright crimson, her eyes turning to a soft shade of pink. No, Blake said calmly as she pressed her lips against the other hunter's own. Oh, and before I forget, why are your eyes pink now? It happens whenever I get extremely embarrassed. Now can I please get my underwear back? Yang asked as she reached for her undergarments. <laughs> Blake giggled and nodded happily. Why, of course, my adorable little dragon, she said as she handed back the girl's garments. Blake reached up and began to twirl her finger around the strand of hair sticking straight up on top of the tall hunter's head. Thank you, and what are you doing? Yang asked as she watched the girl's actions, causing a sh shy smile to make its way back to her features. You know, just yanging around. Oh my god, why? <laughs> Yang, wake up! Plank whispered as she poked the blonde. Oh, this is next. Wow, okay. Real professional, man. <laughs> this is sneaking out the next chapter. Yang, wake up, Blake whispered as she poked the blonde's side, hoping for her partner to wake from her slumber. Mmm, Blake, what is it? It's one in the morning, Yang said lazily, rubbing her eyes as she leaned up slightly in her bed. I told you that I had a gift for you, but it's somewhere special and it's not on school grounds, so we are going to have to go out, out at night considering you're still under dorm arrest. That's why I got you up. Get dressed, Blake said as she hopped down from whatever she was standing on began, and began to fix her bow over her ears. Just as Blake was about to walk towards the bathroom, she heard the blonde beginning to move out of her bed. Her bow twitched as she saw the blonde get it get hung up on the covers and begin to fall from her bed. Blake's heart almost jumped as she launched herself under her partner to catch the brawler. Ying slowly opened her eyes. She was expecting to be on the ground, but found herself in the arms of her girlfriend. Am I dead? She asked as she wrapped her arms around the raven-haired girl for support. No, you're not, Yang. Why do you ask? Blake questioned, placing her hands securely around the brawler, making sure she wouldn't fall. Because I must be in heaven, Yang said as she began to giggle and snuggle against the fauna's chest, causing Blake's cheeks to grow to a bright hue. Blake felt her bow twitch again as she placed the bun on her feet, a small smile curling in onto her features as she leaned up and kissed the girl's forehead. You're adorable, Yang. Yang gave another giggle as her own cheeks began to brighten slightly. Only for my kitten, she said as she walked over to her closet and rummaged around for something to wear. Uh, Yang, I think it'd be better for you to wear something of mine. That way the bright colors don't give away your location, Blake said as she walked over to the blonde teen. I guess you're right. All right, so what do you want me to wear? Yang asked as she turned to her partner and flashed a small grin. Well, something dark, of course, Blake said as she began to rummage through her outfits. Ah, perfect, the raven-haired fauna said as she presented the outfit to her partner. Uh, is this a ninja outfit? Yang asked as she took the outfit and held it up. Yep, I bought it the other day for you. Blake responded as she smiled and turned and headed for the door. Well, hurry up and get it on. Let's get going. After Yang had the outfit on, she walked over to her partner and nodded. Ready, Blake looked over and smiled again. All right, let's go. Blake said as she opened the door and left with her girlfriend. The two snuck around the academy, looking for the exit. It's really hard to find your way around at night, Yang whispered to her partner, who simply nodded and held up her hand. Hold up, there's a guard ahead, 
Blake said as she slowly began to walk once more, watching as, she, as he turned a corner. Yang, come on, Blake whispered as they headed for the exit. Once the two were outside, Yang tilted her head and tapped her girlfriend's shoulder. Should we take Bumblebee, Yang, Blake? Yang asked as she looked around to see if there were any more guards around. Hmm, sounds good to me. You just gotta push it out of the garage and make sure we're a bit away from the academy before you start it. Blake said as she looked around for the garage. Uh, lead me to the garage. Yang smiled and nodded. You got it, Kit Kat. Yang turned and headed for the garage, which wasn't too far from where they currently were. Eventually, the two made it to the garage and were able to take Bumblebee out of the garage without getting caught. Once the two were enough ways away from the academy, Yang took two helmets out of the secret compartment, handing one to her girlfriend and placing the other on her head. Right, we should be good, Yang said as she got on Bumblebee. Blake nodded and fastened the helmet on her own head, get it, getting on behind the blonde and wrapping her arms around her girlfriend for both security and just be able to hold her close. Ready when you are, Yang, Blake said as she let her arms slowly get tighter around the girl's waist. Yang nodded and started Bumblebee, the roar of the engine filling the couple's ears as the blonde revved the engine up a bit. Yang giggled and looked over her shoulder. Hang on, kitten, and remember just tell me where the, this place is, Yang said. Yang turned her head back to face the road and began to drive, the motor having a vicious roar as Yang continued to drive the, her motorcycle. Blake watched from behind the blonde, a small smile curling onto her lips as she watched her girlfriend drive. She really likes to drive. It's kind of cute, Blake thought to herself. All right, take a ride right up here, Blake said, earning a nod from her girlfriend. Soon the two had reached their destination. It was an entrance to some sort of forest. This is the place, Blake? Yang asked as she looked around and cut off her bike, removing her helmet and getting off her bike. Yeah, this is the place, Blake said as she got off the bike and removed the helmet from her head. Not bad, Yang said as she placed the kickstand out on her bike, allowing the bike to rest. The brawn brawler opened the secret compartment and placed the helmet and grabbed her girlfriend's and placed it in. It's not that far in the forest, Blake said as she walked over to her girlfriend, leaning up and locking her lips with the others and intertwining her fingers with the other girl's own. Yang returned the kiss happily and gave the girl's hand a small squeeze. Blake, oh, Blake pulled away and smiled happily. All right, let's get going, shall we? I just know you're going to love this gift, love, Blake said as she began to walk into the forest with her girlfriend. Yang's grin grew wider as she <laughs> leaned in and whispered to her girlfriend, I guess it's going to be pretty possum. Yes, very possum. Oh, God, okay. My my throat hurts again, and it's not going, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's terrible. Okay. What if something happened to you? Yang followed closely behind the faunus, looking around the dark forest as she kept up her pace with her partner, giving a small yawn as she looked down at her gauntlets for a moment, then back at the faunus. Hey, Blake, we almost there? Yang asked as her lilac hues locked onto the other girl. Blake turned her head slightly and nodded. Yes, actually, we're very close. She said and then stopped, reaching and clearing in the middle of the forest with a single tree set in the middle. Now it should be here. Wait here. Blake said and jumped up into the tree with incredible agility. Yang watched the girl jump in the tree and couldn't help but roll her eyes. She really is like a cat, Yang sighed and turned around, crossing her arms as she took in the scene. It was almost like something out of those old Japanese action movies she used to watch, looking up at the sky as it slowly began to shift colors. Must be getting bright soon. Blake soon jumped off, jumped down off a tree holding something in her hands, a box that looked to be made out of pure ebony with gold metal pieces trying to keep the box together. Here it is. Turn, please, Yang, Blake said as she walked closer to the brawler. Yang turned and tilted her head at the box. Uh, what's this, Blake? What's with the writing? I can't read it, Yang said. As she leaned in to get a better look at the box. Blake gave a small smile as she looked down at the box herself. It says, a sleeping dragon deserves to sleep, but for the one who awakes me shall hold tremendous power. Yang, this is my gift for you. Blake said and opened the box, revealing a cantana made of the finest and, and expensive steel in the whole of Remnant had to offer. I can't read. The blade itself was sheathed in black cover, along with along it was a gold dragon flowing from the tip down to the hilt. Hmm. 
Yang couldn't believe her eyes. The sword was astonishing. She looked at the faunus who not only nodded her. Taking this as a sign, Yang picked up the sword, unsheathing the katana from his prison. Yang looked closer to examine the blade. It looked sharp, but it could only be a decorative item. You never know. However, Yang did notice the blade's decoration of two dragons intertwining together to the tip of the blade. Hey, Blake, what does this say? She asked, she asked, she asked the faunus as she showed her the blade the same style of writing on the box. Oh. Blake rolled her eyes in a playful manner at her girlfriend's question. It says, if you wish to awaken the dragon, you must be yourself with the help of your love. Got it? Blake asked as she tilted her head slightly at the blonde, hoping she wouldn't have to repeat herself. Yang nodded slowly as she continued to admire the katana's decorations. It was certainly a blade meant to be treasured. Is it real? By that, can, I mean, can I cut? Can it cut things? Yang asked as she sheathed the blade and looked at her partner. Yes, this sword was given to me as a gift, but that person is a monster. He said he wasn't able to use it because of reasons. I never bothered to worry about that, but he told me the stories of the blade, how it could cut into an entire tree and not bend or shy away. Blake said as she took a step closer to the blonde. But it can only be achieved if you wake the dragon with the help of your love. So that's why I'm going to help you, Blake added. Yang nodded again, feeling her cheeks heat up slightly from the girl's word. Can I test it out on something? Yang asked as she unsheathed the katana again, looking around for a moment to find something. Why don't you try it on the tall grass over there? Yang. Yang. What? I don't know. Can I test that on something? Yang asked as she unsheathed the katana again, looking around for a moment to find something. Why don't you try it on the tall grass over there? Blake asked as she pointed to the slightly overgrown area away from the single tree. Yang tilted her head at this. Can a sword even cut through grass? I thought it was supposed to be difficult. She asked as she began to walk over to the grass. It is, but with the right blade, it can happen. Blake said as she sat the ebony box down carefully on the ground and turned to watch her partner. Yang shrugged and sighed softly, closing her eyes and swinging the blade at the grass as her eyes opened. She was disappointed to find the grass hadn't been cut. Hey, I thought you said this was supposed to work, Yang whined and looked over at her partner with disappointment. It does, you just gotta have the right stance, Blake said as she began as she walked over to the blonde and began to readjust the girl's stance and stood behind her, placing her hands on the girl's arms and began to slowly move through the proper motions of how to correctly swing the blade. You can't have it tilted all the way to one side. You need to be balanced. That way your blade can cleanly slice through. Give it a try. Blake whispered to the brawler, causing her cheeks to grow a bright crimson hue as she quickly nodded and felt the faunus remove herself from her frame. Yang sighted at exactly what the other had showed her and managed to cut through the grass, leaving a clean cut. Yang felt a wave of joy overtake her and her accomplishment, thanks to Blake, of course. That was awesome. Yeah, thanks, Blake. You're the best, but why give me this of all things? Yang asked as she sheathed the katana and turned, looking over at the faunus. Because bad things are going to happen if the White Fang keep growing in numbers and power. I need you to be ready for whatever happens, Blake said as she reached up and removed her bow and clutch in her palm, waking, walking up to the blonde and grabbing her hand with the other. But I already have a weapon. Don't get me wrong, this is an amazing gift, but why would I need it? Yang asked as she smiled softly. As, as she looked down at the other with a look of curiosity holding her features. You'll need it. My old partner, if he ever finds us, he will try to hunt you, hurt you, and even me. I want to make sure you're prepared so that even if I die, you can make it out alive. Blake whispered as she felt the stinging relief in her eyes. And they must have been tears. Great. Yang t shook her head and placed a finger under... Oh, God. Placed a finger under the girl's chin and tilted her head up, lightly kissing the faunus. Relax, nothing is going to happen. Besides, if he were to hurt you, I don't know what I would do. I'd probably end up splitting him in two. So yeah, if anything were to happen to you, just remember I'm always going to protect you, Blake. Yang said it is. She brought the girl into her embrace, lightly nuzzling against her head. You still need to be careful. He's very powerful and unpredictable. That's why I'm giving you this. You could be the only one who can use this, Yang. 
Blake said as she pulled away slightly and grabbed the blonde's right arm, began to fasten her bow around the other's forearm, feeling her ears twitch and flicker atop her head. Yang looked at her forearm, her eyes tracing the black cloth as she began to giggle slightly. Well, I'll make sure that I stop him from ever coming anywhere near you or anyone for that matter. I promise, Blake, Yang said as she leaned in and gently pecked the girl's forehead. Blake felt a single tear manage to find its way from the raven-haired girl's eye as it slowly slid down her pale cheek, but was quickly wiped off by the brawler's thumb. We'll get you a new bow when we get back to Beacon. It's starting to become light out, so maybe we should go. Yang said as she looked up at the sky, becoming slightly orange, indicating that morning was soon to arrive. Yeah, but Yang, we need to train as much as we can. I'll leave the katana here and we'll practice every night, Blake said, giving a gentle smile as she nuzzled herself into the brawler's warm embrace. Of course, Blake, whatever we need to do. I love you, Blake. Yang whispered as she leaned into the other girl's lips once more. Blake returned the girl's kiss, pressing her lips farther further on into the blonde zone. Love you too, Yang. <sighs> Dorm boredom. Ugh, okay. I guarantee this is the last thing I'm going to be recording today, because this is, my throat is killing me right now. Anyways, Yang sighed as she looked around the empty dorm, the sunshine creeping through the drapes as she yawned and hopped up from her girlfriend's bed, looking around for a moment. What to do, what to do, the blonde said as she crossed her arms and leaned to the side. Yang turned her head as she caught the sight of a small note on the desk. The blonde-haired girl walked over to the desk and picked up the note and opened it, beginning to read it aloud. Dear Yang, we all decided to head to class. I'll be back with your lunch and your homework around 12. Try not to get yourself into any trouble. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? You're in the dorm. Love, Blake. Yang Yang placed a note down and smiled slightly, turning and heading into the dorm room's bathroom, closing the door behind her, and walked in front of the mirror and began to undress herself. She looked at her unclothed body and shrugged slightly. I don't look that bad, do I? Yang had always been self-conscious about her body. Yes, most girls would have killed to have a body like hers, and most men would die to touch her, but that's not how she felt. Sure, her clothes might have showed some skin here and there, but it gets too hot in normal clothes when your body temperature is, is twice that of a normal human's. Yang never liked having her body on display, but it's either that or having all your clothes burnt off your body. She gave a small yawn and stretched slightly, turning and heading over to the shower and turning the faucet on, causing a mix of hot and cold water to come out of the spray. Yang soon stepped in and let the water hit her body, giving a small sigh as she leaned back. She leaned back against the shower wall. Yang stood idly as she began to think about random things, looking around and, and walking under the spray and allowing the water to dampen her golden locks. The blonde's hair soon clung to her body more than she stood the more she stood under the water, giving causing the blonde to give a small giggle. Geez, my hair is getting quite long, eh? Oh right, I'm the only one here. Well crap. Eventually Yang began to wash her hair, taking the shampoo and running it through the sweet running the sweet smelling concoction of vitamins and essentials for her hair. Once the blonde was done washing her hair, she completely let the water run down her body again, allowing the water to wash out any mist suds from her hair. Soon the water was off and Yang was out of the shower, a towel wrapped around her torso and another upon her head. It was a pain to make sure her hair was well taken care of, but it was well worth it in the long run. Yang soon felt her palms against the mirror as she began to examine herself in the mirror, giving her reflection a smile as she grabbed a golden toothbrush with an ebony trim. Eventually, the blonde made it out of the bathroom, taking care of her normal morning routine. Yang gave a loud yawn as she stretched and walked into the dorm room, heading for her closet and looking through the many types of clothing for something... <sighs> looking through the many different types of clothing she had. Yang's lilac hues scanned over the fabric of many different colored shirts, she, but she, but eventually focused on a yellow shirt. The blonde-haired girl grabbed the shirt and pulled it off its hanger, holding the shirt up and read the writing. On the shirt was a simple picture of a chibi girl with long raven hair and candy bar holding on to another chibi girl who smiled at her. Yang turned her attention to the writing on the shirt. 
Chocolate Fox, huh? It's pretty cute. Yang nodded into her girlfriend's bed, turning back to the closet and grabbing a pair of charcoal sweatpants. <sighs> Yang reached up and let her, her hair down, causing the slightly dried hair to sprawl down her back as she did the same to the other towel around her waist. The blonde teen grabbed the yellow shirt and slid it over her torso and turned to her closet once more and giggled in a devious manner and moved to the dresser in the closet and opened the drawer that Blake owned and pulled a pair of her of the girl's undergarments, sliding her girlfriend's undergarments on her smooth, pale legs. God. Yang gave a gave herself a playful nod, closing the drawer and walked back, walking back over to where she had her sweatpants placed, picking them up and sliding them on with little effort. So loose, that's what I like about these things, Yang said as she plopped herself down on the Faunus's bed, looking around as she grabbed her scroll and swiped through different pages before she felt her phone, phone vibrate with a notification. Yang noticed the message was another from the not from none other than the fauna, the feline herself. Her smile getting wider, she read the message and starting to text the raven-haired girl back. Are you finally up, Yang? Yeah, I am. What class are you in? I am on free time for now. About to head to ports, and then I'm bringing you lunch. So no homework. I'm glad you reminded me about that. I almost forgot. We have a simple page due for Ublek, but I can help you with that. Uh, all right, then. I'll see you later, then, hon. You will. Don't worry. I love you, Yang. I love you, too, Blake. Yang placed her scroll down and shifted on the covers and began to make herself comfortable in her girlfriend's bed, grabbing her scroll and looking up random things. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Oh, come on. I don't even know. Eventually, her lie accused came across a news article causing her to quirk an eyebrow as she began to read the title. The Schnee company has voted in favor of placing the heiress Weiss Schnee in control of the company. Is she ready? Work also starts on a special dust yet to be announced. Huh? Well, I'm sure she'll do fine, but the dust? What is it? Maybe I can get her to tell me. Yang then opened her messages and typed in the Harris's name, clicking on the girl's photo as it came up. Weiss, please, please, please tell me what the special dust is, please. Sorry, Yang, I cannot tell you yet. You'll have to wait like everyone. I'm letting you date my sister. And you don't seem to hate me dating her. True, but come on, give me a hint. Fine, fine, it's to do with life. Yang grinned and placed her scroll down, nodding and grabbing the pillow that she had her head on and began, began to bring it closer to her frame. Yang gave a small giggle and closed her loud cues. That counts as a win for me. Yang soon began to fall asleep, feeling her consciousness disappear from herself as she fell into a deep slumber. Little did the blonde know, a video camera had been set up in the room to monitor the golden teen. It was set up by none other than Blake. She set up to make sure that the blonde was secure, but today's recording is going to be quite the viewing for the raven-haired girl indeed. Ugh, okay. We have got to be done. So, uh, yeah. I'm sorry that we gotta be done now, but it's, yeah, we have... I don't know, my, my voice is, my, my throat is really hurting, and we've done enough chapters today, and, and it's been enough time, so we'll be done for now. Uh, next time, it'll be uh, a little bit more ice cream, and then after that, it'll be this chapter, Changing Weather, which I think is chapter 15. I'm not so sure, but yeah. <sighs> That'll be it for sure. It's over.